The Pentium 4 was a huge disaster for Intel, but over the years they made some improvements. Let's start at the beginning. Willamette Core, that was the original Pentium 4, and that one was really bad. Clock for clock, it even lost against the Pentium 3. Later, we got the Northwood Core, better performance, higher front side bus, also hyper threading, which gave us more performance when doing multitasking. With the Prescott Core, Intel unfortunately doubled down on the NetBurst architecture, increasing the pipeline even further, which resulted in the heat going up even more. The top Prescott processors having a TDP of 115 watts. Which brings us to 2006, where we got the final Pentium 4 with the Seda Mill Core, and this one is actually not that bad. The manufacturing process went from 180 nanometer to only 65, meaning the TDP is much lower. The SATA mill processors have a TDP of 86 or 65 watts, depending on the stepping. We're getting two megabytes of level two cache, 64 bit extensions, hyper threading, and they can even run Windows 10 32 bits. Now 2006 was also the launch of the Intel Core 2 Duo, so you might be wondering what's the point of building a Pentium 4 retro gaming PC when you can just use a Core 2, getting better performance for even less power consumption? Well, the answer is nostalgia. I know a lot of you out there, you had a Pentium 4 back in the day and you played classic games. Maybe you couldn't afford the latest and greatest like me. I had a Pentium 4 running at 2.6 gigahertz and I had to dial down the settings but yeah I still had a blast and those nostalgic memories they're really strong so if you want to rebuild a Pentium 4 retro gaming PC the SATA mail processor is the one I can recommend. First we need to put together a test system I started using this motherboard it's from Foxconn with a G31 chipset I flashed the latest BIOS I couldn't find a official Foxconn website if you know anything about that, do let me know. So I found a P11 BIOS hosted on a random website. I flashed it, that worked. Unfortunately, it's not compatible with the Pentium 4. I get a BIOS warning when posting that it doesn't support processors beyond 65 watts. So I bought another motherboard. This one is from Gigabyte P31 chipset. It's the P31S3G, nice mainboard. I flashed the latest better version BIOS and this one supports the Pentium 4 just fine. In terms of RAM, we've got four gigabytes of DDR2 800 megahertz memory in dual channel configuration. And for storage, we have a Western Digital Green with 240 gigabyte. For graphics, we've got a NVIDIA GeForce. It's the 9800 GT with one gigabytes of VRAM. We are using Windows XP 32 bit for this project. I think that's most suitable. I'm using easy to boot to install Windows XP for my USB thumb drive. Pro tip, hold down the shift key when you see the easy to boot splash screen, it will load a USB 2 storage driver for higher performance. Out of the box on this mainboard at least, you're only getting USB 1 speeds. After installation, I'm plugging in a USB hard drive and I'm running the Snappy Driver Installer Origin project. It probes the hardware, it has all the drivers. I'm unselecting the video card driver because I want to load a specific driver version, but everything went fine. After a reboot, all the devices check out. The NVIDIA driver, we're using version 182.06. The specific processor version we're using today is the Pentium 4 661 running at 3.6 gigahertz. Now there are various steppings. I've got one with a TDP of 86 watts, but there's one that has a lower TDP of 65 watts that one is a little bit hard to find, so keep your eyes out for that one. Let's run 3 Mark. In 2001 SE, we're getting 20,519. In 03, we're getting 18,116. And in 05, we're getting 6,422. Let's run this system through our usual benchmarks. Far Cry is first, ultra details across all the resolutions. We're getting around 70 FPS that is very playable. A similar picture emerges in Doom 3, 73 FPS across all the resolutions. Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, this surprised me because this is the modern Steam version with some graphical enhancements, but even here 
over 90 FPS across all the resolutions. Fear is an awesome game, very demanding for an XP era title, over 100 FPS in all the resolutions. This is amazing. This is with the soft shadows turned off. Let's enable soft shadows. We're getting still decent performance with a little bit lower FPS at 1280 by 1024, but 80 FPS, 88 FPS at average is still pretty high. So these benchmark numbers, they don't look too bad. However, can it run Crisis? Here we have Crisis running at 1920 by 1080 and I chose the medium details. That seems to be a nice blend between still having decent graphics and the performance not being too bad. And look at that, it runs the game actually really well. This is a little bit later into the game compared to what I usually show in, in other videos. And yeah, it's a smooth gaming experience. I actually got carried away, played a little bit more. Sometimes when you, for example, throw a grenade into a building, then the physics engine bogs down the performance and the FPS dips, but it doesn't happen too often. All in all, yes, at medium details at least, the Pentium 4 3.6 gigahertz can run crisis. And now let's have a look at some classic games. Far Cry is next. This is very close to my heart. I had a Pentium 4 back in the day, 2.6 gigahertz Northwood core. Not sure if it had hyperthreading or not. I'm not quite sure, but it had one gigabyte of RAM. I had an Intel original main board and also the video card, it was a Radeon 9800. And I loved that machine. I really loved that machine. Now I know the Athlon 64 was better, but the Intel box, the machine I put together, it was so stable, never had any issues and I really appreciated that. And Far Cry was one of those games I played a lot. I started off with the demo version back in those days. PC magazines, that was my main resource. And uh, yeah, when I read about Far Cry, I just had to get it and you can download, you could download the demo version back in the day, just like with Crisis. And I played that level over and over. Different ways of attacking the enemy. You could attack from, uh, from sea, from the speedboat, or yeah, just use your rifle, sneak into the camps and into the huts and take him out. So yeah, what a beautiful game. In terms of technical aspects, I'm playing at 1024 by 768. This game does work fine with widescreen, but it stretches the HUD. And for me, the four x three retro aspect ratio is the way to go. It's part of the experience. I'm playing the GOG release. DRM free, this is very important to me. I stopped supporting Steam. They cut me out of all my Windows XP and Vista game library. And it will happen to you with Windows 7 as well. So that's very unfortunate. This project, it never goes online. Everything stays offline. I'm plugging in a USB hard drive. It has the offline installation games on there. And that's just so wonderful. Now, patch version 1.4 is in this game with a hotfix, which fixes an issue where the enemies can shoot through tents, see you, detect you through tents and other uh, barriers, making the, the difficulty too hard. I'm playing on easy, but even on easy, this game can be quite challenging. Sometimes you run into a jump scare situation and you die within a few seconds. So this is one of the more challenging PC games, I think. It does uh, save automatically with checkpoints, so it's not too difficult, but there are some areas in the game where the difficulty gets really hard. If you haven't played this game before, well, you are in for a treat. I think the graphics have aged well, the textures are nice and sharp, and compared to modern games, I like that everything is clear and sharp, and you can actually see the details. You can spot the enemies from a distance. A lot of modern games, they have all sorts of post-processing effects, but you actually don't see the details anymore, which, yeah, in the end of the day, it's meant to be a game and it's meant to be fun. If you have played Far Cry before, well, play it again. It is awesome, especially later uh, when you get closer to the finish line, the uh, types of monsters you encounter and the enemies, yeah, it's quite the experience. So all in all, Far Cry gets a huge thumbs up. This is one of the epic PC FPS games and reminds me of a time where uh, a time before we got console ports and we got 
really awesome exclusive PC games. And I'm continuing playing Painkiller. This is the Black Edition again from GOG. Just download the installer, the installation file on a USB, install it and off you go. I copied the save game over from a previous project and I'm continuing playing this awesome game. Out of Poland, a beautiful country with awesome people and fantastic food. Haven't been there in many, many years. Maybe I should visit this country again next time I'm traveling to Europe. It has some awesome boss fights and I realized there is a health uh, meter at the top which helps you a little bit because sometimes you get the impression that you're not doing any damage because yeah, there's no blood coming out of the boss. So that helps quite a bit. And yeah, really enjoying it. I played, I don't know, another five or so levels and having a blast. The game, finally, a game that, that is actually easy when you select the easy difficulty. The only time I died was when I fell off a cliff or something, just me not being that good with the controls. Um, yeah, so this one is nice and relaxing. You can play on easy, just have a good time, listen to some heavy metal music. It has a really good soundtrack and all in all, I'm really enjoying this one. So we had a look at the benchmark results and they don't look too bad. We tested a few games as well. They all ran fine. So what is my take on the Pentium 4 661? Well, in short, if you want to build a Pentium 4 retro gaming PC, this is the processor I would recommend. It has, yeah, matured enough. We're getting a small manufacturing process. The heat output is not too high. Two megabytes of level two cache, 64 bit extensions, hyper-threading as well, and also LGA 775, that means PCI Express, so video cards are easy to find, they don't cost too much, decent performance, whereas with AGP it becomes hard to find. A decent video card that's AGP and can run fear, for example, you will have to spend quite a premium. And another benefit is the cooling solution, LGA 775, you will have a much easier time finding a decent tower cooler compared to socket 478. Now, should you build a Pentium 4 retro gaming PC? That really depends on you. Nostalgic feelings, there is no arguing with that. The common sense is just go with a Core 2. It's got much better performance, but that's not how nostalgic memories work. I like that feeling of having a Pentium 4 together with Windows XP and reliving the games from the past. And I'm sure that resonates with many of you out there. So all in all, and that might surprise you, but the Pentium 4 with the Seda Mill Core does get the thumbs up. I really like it. And you saw the benchmark results over 60 FPS in a wide range of games from older to more modern and more demanding. So there's enough performance there. And the Seda Mill Pentium 4, yeah, it's the best one out of the, yeah, out of a really terrible CPU architecture. And now I would love to hear from you. What is your personal experience with the Pentium 4? Did you have a Cedamil Core or maybe one of the other ones, Northwood, Prescott? Maybe you had an Athlon 64 and maybe you held out for the Core 2. I love reading your personal stories. They're very unique. Everyone has a different story to tell. And this is what this hobby is all about. While everyone has a different situation and played different games, it's a common theme. It brings us all together to share those happy memories. What is retro depends also on the person, how old you are. For me, yeah, I grew up with a 386 and MS-DOS, but I also like the Vista era, the Windows XP era, the Windows 98 era. I love all of them. And I do have younger viewers in my audience. You grew up with maybe a Pentium 4 and Windows XP. So what is retro gaming to one person might be totally, totally different for you. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I had a blast putting it together, testing this Pentium 4. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to see more videos to do with old computers and playing classic games, please subscribe. There's always something new and exciting happening on this channel. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.